I made this app completely with ChatGPT. The idea came from one of the agents in my other web app, YourAIAgent.com, specifically the email support agent. But I had an exciting idea to make it better, to be able to connect multiple different types of accounts, custom domains, Gmail accounts, eventually Outlook. But how do you start? An idea such as this is just so complex, building the front end, the back end, connecting all of the APIs. So how do you get all of your scrambled ideas out into the world? Well, I use ChatGPT and this is how I did it. This is going to be a multi-part series. In this first video, I'm gonna show you the finished product, though it's still in beta right now. At least I have something that we can actually use. I'm gonna talk about the idea, how it came into fruition. I'm gonna walk through some of the problems I encountered building this web app and how they were solved using ChatGPT. I'll quickly show you some results. We'll close this video up. Then in part two, we're gonna start the marketing aspect for this. And again, I'm only gonna use ChatGPT throughout. So ChatGPT is going to be my master and I'm gonna execute all of its commands. We're gonna build the marketing homepage using only ChatGPT. We're gonna ask how to advertise with ChatGPT, how to get new customers. I'm gonna show you its full power for starting an online business. All right, so Inbox Agent, what is it? Inbox Agent is your personalized AI agent that has been trained on your company data, and its sole purpose is to respond to email support tickets, customer inquiries, non-work-related requests, whatever it might be. Think of it as a full-time assistant working on your behalf, saving you time, and getting better at its job day by day. In Inbox Agent, you connect your email account, whether it's from a custom domain or a Gmail address, and then you start receiving emails into your inbox. Every time you receive an email, your AI agent reads the email. It crafts a response based on your company's data or knowledge base. It sets it up to be a draft, and then you go in, you edit it, make sure it's the truth, make sure it's correct. And then when you send a reply back to your customer, that response goes back into your knowledge base, trains the AI agent again, so that future email responses are even better crafted to your business. So every time you use the software, your AI agent or your AI assistant is getting better at knowing your company, knowing how you write, your style, your tone, your types of responses, and where the goal is eventually this can be fully on autopilot. You can just let it run and nobody would know the difference between you and this AI agent. All right, let me show you an example. All right, here I am in Gmail and I'm going to send an email to an account that I've hooked up with Inbox Agent. So let's go bob at inboxagent.com and the subject is going to be, I need help accessing my account and I'm going to write, hey, I can't seem to log into my account. Where do I go to get a new password? Thanks, Wes. So let's send this through. Here I am back in Inbox Agent. There we go, the new message has just arrived in the inbox. You can see the AI is working on this email right now. So we're gonna give it a few seconds here. There we go, the response is completed and you get a little green robot icon. So I can click on this email. And here is the response, hi Wes. I'm sorry to hear you're having trouble logging into your account. You can reset your password by going to our login page and clicking on the forgot password link. Follow the instructions and you'll receive an email with further steps to reset your password. If you encounter any issues during the process, feel free to reach out. Thanks, Ava. And my AI agent is named Ava for this account. So we look down here and there is an icon. This green icon means that this response is going to be used to train the AI for future responses. I can uncheck this if I don't want to send this to the knowledge base, but I like this answer to this question. And if I ever get a future email with a similar question, the AI agent is going to know how to respond. So I think this is a good idea to keep this in the knowledge base. I can click send and it will send it to my customer's inbox. So when I initially started building this, I had no idea where to start. 
I had very little experience with the Gmail API. I didn't know if the Gmail API would work for all of my use cases. Turns out that in a conversation with ChatGPT, I found this to not be the case. So I also didn't know about the future API calls I would use and a lot of ticky tack bubble stuff, problems that I kept running into, a lot of extract with rejects. And I had barely any idea what rejects was when I first started this project, but it is so powerful and I ended up using it so much, but only because ChatGPT would give me these rejects expressions. So let me walk you through a few of the problems that I encountered. To allow users to label their emails when they come from a Gmail address, I had to ask ChatGPT how to do this. It told me the system labels for the tabs, promotions, social, and updates. Those are these tabs right here. I had to get the message ID, apply the system label, a post request to this API with this JSON body. So I tested this and I found that it didn't also remove the inbox label. So I asked ChatGPT how to do that. It updated the JSON body now to include remove label IDs inbox. And then I started thinking, if I label an email, do all future emails from that email address get labeled the same? Kind of like how spam works. If you label an email as spam, usually all future emails go into your spam folder. So I asked ChatGPT this question and it said no. Labeling an email through the Gmail API or manually does not automatically apply the same labels to future emails from the same email address. So it told me how to do that. And it said you need to create a new filter. This is how you do that via the Gmail API, a completely different post request going to the filters endpoint. This was the JSON body. And so I added it into my app. Another problem that I ran into, and this was a very frustrating problem, is that Gmail tends to send different types of JSON bodies for multiple different email types. So you can see that I am walking through my problems with ChatGPT. I'm writing what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing, some examples, and even if I don't know the correct language, I'm trying to summarize it as best as possible. So don't give up, just write whatever comes to your mind, write what you're seeing, ChatGPT will figure it out for you. And basically what I was trying to say is, when you get an API request to your app, you get a bunch of fields that you can use dynamically later in the workflow. But the problem is, when you get data from a Gmail email, so from the API, this request data is going to look different based on the different types of email, whether it's plain text, HTML, multi-part alternative, which basically means it's both an HTML and a plain text email in one. And Bubble has a limitation. It maps the initial request that you get. So here it's mapping both body HTML and body plain. But unfortunately, if it's a different type of email, this request looks differently. The body HTML is named differently. So I can't grab body HTML again. Anyways, I put in a sample JSON body that I received and I pasted the whole thing in here and it understood exactly what I was talking about. It's common to encounter different structures depending on the content type and format of the email. So these are the words I was looking for that I didn't quite know how to articulate. It also taught me about payload structure and meme types. So here's that text plane. Sometimes it contains parts, sometimes it doesn't. Like sometimes it's right in the body. And because of that, parsing, another word I was unfamiliar with, and this is what I mean. I put in my jumbled thoughts and it spit out the proper terminology. But the answer was basically to handle both cases. So find an email that has payload parts, find an email that has payload body data. And later in this conversation, I also found that emails can contain no payload parts, but just body. So I actually had to have three fallback plans when I was parsing Gmail emails. But thanks to ChatGPT, it gave me that idea and it told me exactly how to do that. 
and the fallback code logic I needed to implement. And the result was this complicated backend workflow with different fallback plans, read email, read email to, and then read email text plane. So three types of emails I have encountered and getting the results based on that specific call. Let's go through two more problems that I encountered. So the first was, I need you to show me how to set up Mailgun API in my bubble app. Earlier in a different conversation, I talked through all of my options. First, I was going to use SendGrid and ChatGPT recommended SendGrid for the email API, but I had problems setting up the account. So the next best option was to integrate with Mailgun. And for this, I tried the new ChatGPT 01 preview, and this was pretty good. It told me how to set up MX records, how to create routes, also how to create dynamic routes in my app. A route is basically an expression in Mailgun. When any email goes into that email address, it's forwarded into the bubble app so that the user can interact with that email, write an AI response, send a reply, etc. So ChatGPT show me how to do that. It show me how to set up the API connector, how to create a backend workflow that detects this data, which is a webhook. And a webhook is whenever an email is received, I automatically get it immediately compared to polling. Polling would mean that every 30 minutes or so, I send a request to the system to see if there are any new emails. That's very inefficient. I would rather get a webhook when there is a new email. So it showed me how to do that, even what to name my webhooks, how to configure the post request. I was going to need all of this data, test it, secure it, some additional tips. I didn't end up using this. Reading that answer through, I realized that that wasn't dynamic. I needed my users to create routes automatically, and therefore it thought for 14 seconds. I'll make a video on this channel about ChatGPT01 preview and how it thinks through its answers, but it told me how to do that with IMAP and POP3 and then OAuth for Gmail accounts. I'll just tell you guys one more problem that I experienced and how it was solved with ChatGPT. For those of you familiar with Bubble, they have a plugin called the Rich Text Editor. And if I add it to the page and then click preview, I'll write some text in it. You can see it's pretty janky. It's pretty ugly. I don't like how it looks. There are a lot of options that I don't want nor need in my app. So I asked ChatGPT, is there any way to edit this rich text editor so that it doesn't have these icons? And also, is there a way to move this bar to the bottom? And sadly, they don't give you those options right out of the box. There's no way to edit this rich text input. So you're kind of handcuffed but ChatGPT gave me the idea. Why don't you add CSS code on your website when the QL container is loaded? And based on asking ChatGPT, it figured out that the rich text editor is actually the quill editor. So if you add HTML to the page and then add this code, it will change the rich text input to look like how you want. And after fiddling around with that HTML code, I got something that looked like this. It has just the options that I needed. At first, these were fully spaced apart because it was only hiding it. So I told ChatGPT that problem. I actually used the snipping tool. I snipped a picture and I showed ChatGPT that this icon was a problem. It was moved way over here. So it understood exactly what I was talking about. And then it gave me code that squished all the icons together. And you can see that the toolbar is also at the bottom. And this is the full code that it gave me. It even changed the font within the rich text editor to Roboto and 15 to make it look like the rest of my app. And look at all of this code. I would have never figured this out by myself. And using it, I was able to get it to look exactly how I wanted it to look. I'm so excited to use ChatGPT in the future on this project. Remember, in future videos, I'm going to design the homepage, all the marketing text. I'm going to get a bunch of video ideas for a new channel about the inbox agent. I'm going to listen to it 100% and see how fast I can build this and how fast I can grow it. 
This app was built in less than a week with the help of ChatGPT. The whole time building, I literally had two tabs open, one bubble tab and one ChatGPT tab. And I was going back and forth between the two tabs. Lastly, I'm gonna quickly walk you through the setup. If you want to try Inbox Agent for yourself, remember it's still in beta, but it's close to finished. So at inbox-agent.com, you're gonna start with entering an email address. So let's go hey at inboxagent.com. Let's do a password, re-enter the password. I'm gonna click sign up and then it walks you through the setup. So I'm going to choose a domain email. You can also choose a Gmail account. Those are email addresses with at gmail.com at the end. So I'm gonna click domain email, continue. We need to name our agent. I'm gonna call it Ava and my company's name is inbox agent. Let's hit continue. This is the email address that I want to connect. So let's say it's support at inboxagent.com. Then we need to add some MX records. This allows us to send and receive emails on behalf of your domain. I'm using pork bun. So if I click details, then DNS records, I go type MX record, the value points to this one. So I'll paste that in the answer and the priority wants me to write 10, click add, and then do the same for the second one. I'm gonna copy this, paste it in, priority 10, click add. It will show the two MX records at the bottom. Hit continue. Step four, optional, you can upload your knowledge base to start. This will give your AI agent a head start. But remember, with every email that you send, your AI agent gets better trained. So you don't actually need this. You can skip this step. But if you want to, click to upload a file. .txt files work best. I'm going to click this. Find that document. Open it. And then click finish. And you're all set up. All future emails will be routed into your inbox agent account. Your AI assistant will automatically write and craft the response. You go in, fix it up, send it out. It will save you time. It will save you money. And you'll even get better, clearer, more correct responses to your users. After you click finish, it will take you to a Stripe checkout page. I'm still fiddling with the pricing, so I don't quite know what it's going to be yet. But you will have to subscribe before you use the app because we're using workflow units right away. We're using AI large language models right away, but you can cancel at any time. You're gonna have your own customer portal. All of it's gonna be handled in the proper way. If you're new to this channel, click subscribe to follow along with this video series. Again, part two is going to be creating the marketing website using only ChatGPT. How will it design the website? What type of text is gonna be on the page? What type of images, what type of colors, where are the buttons going to be? I'm going to build that out live in the video. I'm going to show you how I use ChatGPT for these types of projects. If you actually want to use Inbox Agent, I'll leave a link in the description below. I'll also eventually leave a link to the new YouTube channel, which is also going to be run by ChatGPT. It's going to give me all the video ideas for this company. And if you want to follow along with that, I recommend subscribing to that channel as well. If you want to build your own AI app, like youraiagent.com or inboxagent.com, I built and designed an online course called How to Build a Custom AI App. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there later.